School is over and the commotion is dying down. The students scatter to go to their clubs or head home. Alright, I have to go home and get ready. Even if Sakura is going to stay over, I need to mentally prepare myself. I should go buy groceries and wait for her to come after her club activities. Well, what should we have for dinner tonight? I stand in front of the supermarket and think. Having Sakura stay over means convincing Fujine. Then dinner should be something that they'll both enjoy. I already made a huge dinner yesterday. I'm not going to be working for a while. And there's one more person to feed. So I shouldn't be spending money. But this month is an exception. I have my savings. And I can't be distracted by money during the Holy Grail War. And I should be repaying Sakura every chance I get. Oof. I leave the supermarket with bags full of food. I think I bought too much, but it's all good. I got some fresh codfish, so maybe I should make stew tonight. Alright, anti-Fujine measure taken care of. I stop walking. Someone's pulling at my shirt from behind. What's going on? Still wondering, I turn around. There stands a young girl with silver hair. What? I quickly jump back. I tense myself to act, but the girl just stands there and smiles. I don't feel any murderous intent or hostility from her. I'm glad you're alive, Oni-chan. She looks at me with a big smile. What? I'm sure of it. This girl is Berserker's master. She controls the monster who nearly killed me. The girl of the family of Magi who started this war. The family which my father betrayed. Why is she here in the shopping district during daytime? She doesn't feel like a stranger at all. It must be because the priest's story was so vivid. That's why. Ew, yeah? Hmm? I blurred her name out without knowing what it means. Oh, sorry. That's wrong. Ilya. Yeah, it's Elias Field. I'm sorry for getting it wrong. I quickly apologize. It doesn't matter if she's Berserker's master or the daughter of the Einsburn family. It's just that I can't leave her alone when she, her face looks so sad. She's glaring at me, probably because I shortened her name. Oh, I, I didn't mean to make you mad. I just blurted it out. Tell me your name. What? Tell me your name, Monichan. It's unfair that I don't know your name. Oh, she's right. Elias Field told me her name, but I haven't told her mine yet. I'm Shiro. Emiya Shiro. Emiya Shiro? That's a strange name, Monichan. No, Emiya was my last name. And Shiro is my first name. If it's hard to say it, just call me Shiro. I correct her pronunciation. I point it right at her nose, and she stands there in surprise. Even though I regret it, it's too late. Looking like she's about to cry. Shiro. Shiro, huh? Yeah, I like the name. It's simple, but it sounds pretty. It suits you, Shiro. I'll forgive you for what you just did. She embraces my arm. What? Hold on, Elias, what are you doing? No, you can call me Ilya. Shiro. I'm calling you Shiro, so this is fair. Ooh, well, that's easier to say, but hold on. I shake my arm, but Ilya only screams happily and enjoys it. This is bad. The neighbors might spread bad rumors about me if I keep this up. Damn, what do you want? Do you want to fight me right now? I pull her off by force. Oh. Yeah, it looks unhappy. What? Making a face like that won't do you any good. I don't know what your intentions are, but I'm a master. You can't defeat me that easily. Groceries in hand, I glare at her. But she only looks back at me in wonder. Um, here we are. Yeah, what's you? Uh, 
she isn't like before. Well, she was laughing back then too, but her smile is different now. Could it really be? Elia, you didn't come here to fight? What? Do you want to be killed? Her gaze sends a chill down my spine. No matter how young this girl may be, she is the strongest master. She laughs instantly, but can also become a ruthless master. I don't get it, but I don't mind you saying so. Nor do I mind going ahead with my plans. Do you want to die along with Saber? Don't kid around, no way. I don't want to die and I don't want to fight you here. Right? Masters can't fight during daytime. You don't have Saber with you, and I don't have Berserker with me. You're right. Then why did you come here? Did we meet up by chance? It's not chance. I snuck out past Sela and especially came to see you. You better feel honored. I feel dizzy. Every time I think she turns into a cruel master, she returns to being the innocent girl. I can't tell which is the real her. Alright, so you came to see me. But you have no intention of fighting me, am I correct? I came to talk to you. I've waited all this time, so I can, right? I don't know what she means by all this time, but it seems Ilya just came to talk with me. Or do you not want to talk with me? I'll go home if you don't want to. I really don't want to go home, but you'll hate me if I make you do something you don't want. Ilya looks me straight in the eye. As a master, it's dangerous to spend any time with Ilya. If Saber were here, I bet she wouldn't hesitate to make herself heard. But I can't leave her alone when she looks like that. I know it's reckless, thoughtless, and rash, but... I don't mind talking with you. To be honest, I wanted to talk with you. Alright, then let's go over that way. I found a small park over there earlier. Nelia starts running. Come on, come on. I'll leave you behind if you don't hurry. She twirls about as she runs. Well, I guess it can't be helped. I accept this turn of events and follow after Elia. She called me Shiro, so I should treat her as a normal girl and not a master. There is no one in the park. Nobody's playing in the sand pit or on the swings. It feels desolate, but I sit down on a bench with Elia. This must look weird to other people. Elia is a foreigner, so we don't look like siblings, and our ages are too far apart to be friends. So, what do you want to talk about, Elia? You came to me, so do you have something you want to ask me? Why? I have nothing I want to ask you. Well... How should I react to this incomprehensible girl? Yulia, you're the one who wanted to talk. So why do you say you have no business with me? You wouldn't have come if you had no business with me, right? Uh, really? We can't talk if we don't have business? Uh, that's not what I meant. Sorry, I put it in the wrong way. We can still talk. Actually, I guess it's better to talk about purpose. But man, I don't really know you well. So I don't know what I should talk about. I don't know what you like or anything. You don't want me asking you about something you'd rather not talk about, right? You're right, but what should I ask? Will you promise me you won't get mad whatever I ask you? I'll try. I'm your own chan so I'll try to act mature. I see. Sincero, do you like me? What? What the hell is she asking? No, you're a liar. You said you won't get mad, but you're mad. Well, anyone would be shocked if you asked that question. You shouldn't be asking that question when you've already attacked me. Hey, that was different. It's because you jumped out even though you're weak. It's not my fault. It is your fault. You're ready to kill from the beginning. So why are you talking about me liking you and everything? Ilya quivers up and goes quiet. Oh. Crap. I decided that I forget about us being masters, but I guess I didn't. Um, Ilya? 
It's important to me. You're an idiot, Shiro. If I hadn't stopped him, you'd be dead right now, but you still want to talk big. Emiya looks down, trembling. Man, I guess I have no choice. I'm the one who started this whole master conversation. I'm the older one here, and Ilya is a girl. Ahem. Um, Ilya. I prepare myself for what I have to say. I... I don't hate you. I don't know you really well because we just met, but I don't, don't hate you. At the very least, I want to be friends when you're like this. Really? Um, you feel more like a little sister to me. And I won't bring up that incident again. That's all I can promise you. Can you believe me? Yeah. I believe you if you say so. Ilya tackles me and embraces my arm again. Man, what are you? I complain, but I accept it. It's not so bad. I don't feel any hostility from her. Her hugging me won't kill me, and it wouldn't be older brother-like to panic now. I guess I'll have to talk with her, just like she wants. My talk with Ilya lasts for about an hour. She listens to my pointless rambling and mundane stories. Since when did it start getting painful? She is an innocent girl. She's a master and has no doubts about it. I think her lack of fear about going into battle is sad. A family of magi called Einstein. She is sent out as the greatest master, a result of their thousand year old history. If that is Ilya's goal, then... Ilya, can I ask you something? What? Do you recognize the name Enya Kiritsugu? I have to ask you this question. The air freezes. The silence is dead. Nope. I don't know anyone like that. Her silver hair flutters. Very light, she gets up from the bench and turns around. It's getting late. Berserk is gonna wake up at night, so I have to go going now. Ilya waves goodbye. Yeah, I should go home too. I get up. This is all the rest I'll get. We will be enemies again once the sun sets. But, can I talk with you again, Ilya? I ask the question as if it's only natural. Um, I don't know. Do you want to see me again, Jiro? Of course. I wouldn't ask you if I didn't want to. Okay. Then I'll come again tomorrow if I feel like it. Don't expect too much and keep waiting, okay? She runs out of the park, but she suddenly stops. I was lying. He is someone I know. Ilya. I was given birth to this world to win the Holy Grail world. My mission is to kill you and Kiritsugu. She sprints off. She doesn't turn around. I watch until she's out of sight. Uh, oh yeah. I forgot about it because of all the things that happened this morning. But I did make a promise with Ilya. Well, it wasn't really a promise. But I'd be really dishonest if I don't go. As I'm the only one who asked her if we could see each other again. Saber and Sakura are... They're doing the dishes together. If I tell them I'm going out, they'll either stop me or insist on coming along. If I'm going to see Ilya, I should do it alone. I feel bad, but I'll just leave a note and sneak out. I managed to sneak out. I left them a note saying, going to buy stuff for dinner, be back in an hour, so they shouldn't be too worried. Hmm. 
so she's not here as I thought. There's no one in the park, even with the apartments looming overhead. This place is so cold that it feels like it'll start snowing at any moment. Well, I don't know what I'd talk about even if she were here. I sit on the bench. Setting the grocery bag down, I look up at the dark sky. It seems the di gifts I bought at the shopping district went to waste. I stare at the sky absentmindedly. It must be because this place is surrounded by buildings. Only a tiny square of sky is visible, and it seems farther away than usual. It's cold. I can see my breath. The cold, dry air is freezing, and I wouldn't be surprised if it started snowing. Well, I should go home. I grab the grocery bag and get up. It's past 2 o'clock. I have to leave now if I'm going to be home on time. Huh? My legs freeze. They won't move. They don't even budge. No matter how hard I try. My vision blurs. No, that's an understatement. My vision is broken. My eyes have bulged into my skull and I have no sense of distance. I realize I'm in the worst situation possible. It feels like my body has been turned to stone. My nerves are disconnected, leaving me detached from the world. It's like I'm watching the world through a camera, controlling myself in a video game. I'll be killed. It was a mistake to go outside alone. I can't even see my attacker's face, let alone move, and... Did I surprise you? You were completely defenseless, so I had to tease you. Now I'm being teased by this mischievous girl. Oh, you're back to normal. I guess contacting you through vision isn't that strong. She appears from behind me. She's smiling probably because she was already here and was watching me from behind. But you're no good if you can't dispel magic using your own powers. Your future looks gloomy if outside factors are the only things that can dispel you. She lectures me. But her words aren't coming into my brain. Ilya, what are you doing? Surprise attacks are unfair, even if we are both masters. Hey, that wasn't a surprise attack. I was sitting next to you for a while, but you didn't notice me. Then you made it worse by getting ready to leave. That was your own fault, Chiro. You were sitting next to me this whole time? Yeah, I was hiding a bit, but you're too careless. You didn't notice my presence, and you were captivated by a spell that merely uses direct magical energy contact. You're a master, so you should keep a better watch on your surroundings. Ilya warns me, utterly amazed. Oh yeah, you're right. She seems so much like a teacher that I find myself nodding. It's good if you understand. So, what's going on today? You're empty inside right now, but you don't have paper with you. If you're trying to rest, wouldn't it be safer to do it at home? Huh? Well, I didn't come here to rest. Well, you're right that not bringing saber was careless of me. Right? I can't even leave you alone because you seem so odd. I wasn't supposed to talk to you after yesterday, but I'll make an exception for today. Ilya is saying something strange. After all, I came to this park because... So, why are you just sitting there? You would have been dead if I came here as a master. Well, I just came here to see you. You told me yesterday that we could meet again. What? Oh, she's surprised. Well, it's not like it was an official promise. Why? You came to see me even though I told you I'll be trying to kill you? That's your choice. It's not mine. I just want to talk to you, not fight. And in any case, Ilya said she'd kill me, but she just let a chance go by. She could have really done it if she kept her spell on me. And she didn't do so. I don't want to fight her. Masters don't fight during daytime, right? Then let's forget about it for now. 
I just came here to see you. Do you want to kill me more than you want to talk to me? Uh, that's an unfair question. I have to do both. It's fun to talk with you, but I can't forgive you. So I can't choose just one. Ilya hangs her head and mumbles. She looks serious, but she's actually suffering rather than just being troubled. And I see. And I don't care. I won't ask you to choose one. Uh, but I... I know. Since we're both here, let's talk. I brought a gift for you today, so we'll fight some other time. I take out a bag of taiyaki. It cooled off while I was waiting for Ilya, but they're still a bit warm. Here's the offering. I'll give you these, so please let me go this time. I hold out the taiyaki. Oh. Ilya hesitates, but then takes them and nods. I'm not too sure what we talked about after that. We talked about meaningless things. What she likes to eat, what she doesn't like to eat, how she likes birds and hates cats, how she likes snow but hates the cold, how she wants to play but can't, and how she doesn't like her maids but wants to like them. Ilya looks happy just to be talking. She is sitting on the bench, eating the taiyaki and swinging her legs. She looks like a child waiting for her father's return. I see. So you didn't come here to this town by yourself? Nope. I came here with Sela and Lathric. I don't need people to keep an eye on me, but I do need people to take care of my place, right? So Ilya came to Japan with two maids. Are they staying at a hotel or something? What? Are you curious? You want to know where I live? Uh, yeah, I'm curious. You keep popping up at unexpected times, but what would I do if an emergency happened and I don't know where you live? Even if she gets injured and asks me for help, I won't be able to do... I won't be able to if I don't know that. I'll rest a little easier if I know where she lives. Alright, you're special. If you want to know that badly, I'll tell you. Then... Ilya stands up and places her hand on my forehead. Whoa, hey, Ilya! Just be quiet. If you enter some other place if you resist me too hard, it's troublesome to return things to normal if that happens. Uh, okay. Under that kind of pressure, I can only nod obediently. That's a good boy. Then close your eyes. And don't look around too much, okay? Even though I'm transferring you, you'll get motion sickness because the view is someone else's. Elia places her forehead onto mine. I'm surprised, but I close my eyes. At that moment... My vision accelerates and expands. No, was it my consciousness that expanded? The next thing I know, I'm looking down at an unfamiliar scene. Can you see it? I transferred your vision to my forest. Ilya's voice echoes in my head. I can't reply nor nod back. This vision is the only thing allowed for me. I'm one of the trees in the forest. It's natural that my body doesn't move. My body has been turned into a tree in an instant. Did you memorize the route? Then I'll transfer you to the castle wall now. The scene changes. My vision is the only sense I have. I still exist, but I can't feel myself. I'm a wall now. I can sense my limbs, but there are no limbs for me to move. I have a body that can move at will, yet I can't move it. Laser it? I cannot find Ilias Fiyo-sama. Do you know where she may be? No? Ilias should be somewhere. Laser it. Please do not refer to Milady so cruelly. Ilias Fiyo-sama is not like us. Have you forgotten our mission? Zella is Ilias' teacher. I am to dress Ilia with Heaven's Feel, the third dress. Correct. It seems even your poor memory can retain that. I didn't forget. 
but Yuvia hates rain, right? So I don't like it. I understand that as well. But we need her to wear it when the time comes. We were made for that purpose. She must be prepared as well. Zera. What is it, Lazer? Don't you get tired? Not at all. I hear two identical maids talking. When I realize those two maids are the maids Ilya was talking about, I finally returned to my body. How was it? That was some great transformation magic, right? I hold my mouth and bare my nausea. I feel sick, suddenly feeling the realism of my body. Ilya, what was that? It's a transfer of consciousness. I moved your vision into some other object. There's a nerve going from your eyes to your brain, right? I connected that nerve to something other than your eyes. You were getting information from the trees in my forest instead of your eyes. Hmm, so it's not that I became the tree, but I received their vision and mistakenly thought I was one? Oh, I thought you were dense, but you're actually pretty bright. Yes, that's right. That was magic to change the input while leaving the equipment called human alone. It's a big deal to change someone into a tree, but it's still in the realm of magic to connect one's consciousness to a tree. Farsight and position are an application of this magic. I see, but that's some pretty impressive stuff. I couldn't do anything when you transferred me to the tree. Couldn't you also use it to nullify your opponent? Yes, our specialty is in flow and transfer of power. For example, Hosaka Magi can transfer their magic energy into jewels without diluting its purity. Using that same technique, they can also transfer someone's consciousness. If there's an enemy they want to seal, they can nullify him by transferring his consciousness into a jewel or in a mobile doll. But the success rate of transferring someone's consciousness is so low that even we, the ones trans specialized in transfer, won't use it as an attack. The one I did to you was an exception. You didn't resist, and that forest is mine. It's normally much harder to connect things. And your consciousness will be forced to return if the original body is stimulated in any way. The body will call its consciousness back when it senses danger, even if the, even if the consciousness is unaware. That's what happened to you just now. You couldn't do anything when your mind was in the tree, but your body called you back when I shook it. Hmm. So this is something like a dream? You can never wake up from a dream, no matter how hard you try. Dreams usually end when morning comes, when the body wakes up out of habit. Mm, it's a bit different. You can wake up from a dream using your own will, but that's why transferal is not fit for offense. It's more of a for self-protection. If you transfer your consciousness to your familiar or a doll that you can move, you can safely pursue magic. So your consciousness just returns to your original body, even if an enemy destroys your familiar? Yes. Magi who transfer their minds usually hide their original bodies in a safe place. In cases like this, you need to watch out when you transfer it into a familiar with its own soul. When you transfer your consciousness into something with a proper chain of command, the initiative is completely held by them. So even if you transfer into humans or animals, you can only occupy a corner of their brain and observe what they see. They will serve as a camera, not as a remote controlled robot. Moving your consciousness into a living thing with its own will is more like reincarnation than transfer. That alone is great magic, but no ordinary magus should be able to do it. Reincarnation. Magic to create an offspring with your soul in it after you die. <coughs> Some magi has achieved that goal, 
but I hear that reproducing a soul is difficult. Even if you start over from the moment of birth, if you cannot inherit all the power from your previous self, you are a copy, not a reincarnation. A copy is degraded by its very nature. Therefore, a copied magus is inferior to its previous self. If you want to transfer yourself into a living thing, you can make a familiar without a soul. But the soulless familiars used today are weak. It's just like controlling a doll filled with cotton. They're only useful as messengers. And even if you transfer your consciousness into a familiar or doll, you will disappear if your original body grows old or dies. It's not immortality. The only eternal things in this physical world are souls. But nobody can keep souls by themselves. A soul cannot stay in this world without a body, and will be destined with eventual death once it obtains a body. Well, it just means that the limit of magic by Einstein and Kosaka. Then, a bell rings the time. A clock in the park points at three. I guess it's already been an hour. Oh, I have to get going. Are you going home too? Yeah, I should be heading home. Ilya nods and walks to the middle of the park. Okay, I shouldn't say this, but the white girl asked me, Will you come see me again tomorrow, Shiro? As if she knows I'm going to refuse. You idiot. I don't even need to answer. Of course I'll come tomorrow. You showed me your house, so it's my turn next. Okay, then I'll be sure to call you up first thing tomorrow. Ilya runs off. Under the cloudy sky, the white-haired girl looks just like a fairy.